Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to be updating to iNav4. Right, so before I get started I just want to apologise. Storm Eunice is actually at its maximum today, so if you can hear wind in the background, sorry about that. If you hear things falling over, just have a laugh. But anyway, today we're going to be updating to iNav4. A couple of weeks ago I had a video out about doing a full installation of iNav 4.1 from scratch. Well actually 4.0 or 4.1 doesn't really matter. But the update process is a lot quicker and a lot simpler. So if you already have a plane on 3.0.x like I have 3.0.2 on this dart right here. I will take you through the update process to get it onto 4.0 or 4.1. Likewise, if you're coming from 4.0 and want to go on to 4.1, I will also mention the steps to get that done as well, because it's very similar. It's actually even easier. But the first thing that we need to do is obviously download the configurator. I'm not going to go in too much depth on this because it's all covered in the installation video. So I'll put a link in the top corner or the video description to just that chapter on doing the firmware update and the installation. That's actually shaking the camera. Uh, but anyway, uh, what we need to do is go to GitHub, which again, I'll put the link in the description, and we're going to download the version that we want to install. As I mentioned, I'll briefly cover it again here. If you are new or don't want to test pre-release software, do not click on any downloads with pre-release on them. You saw at the top 4.1 has a green circle with latest. 4.0 doesn't have anything, but it is a stable release. Likewise, 4.0 uh, pre-release has that, so you wouldn't download that. So only download stable releases unless you are happy to test. Of course, if there's a stable release after the pre-release, you won't get anything new or different by downloading this. This evolves into this, so just download the latest. What you need to do is go down to the assets section in the version you want and then just download the correct version for your computer. Again, I'm not going to cover that, it was in the other video. And if you've done it for an installation, you probably know how to do it anyway. So let's get on. So what we need to do now is just run iNav Configurator. I'm in using 4.1 because that's the version that I want to use. But if you are going to 4.0, though, to be honest, if you're on 3.0, there's no real point going to 4.0. You might as well go to 4.1. So I did say at the beginning we could go from 3.0 to 4.0, but to be honest, there's not really any point. You may as well just go to 4.1. There's nothing really changed as far as the flight goes. So you're not actually going to be getting you know newer features that could fly worse. None of that is an issue at all. So you may as well just go straight to 4.1. The main change with 4.1 was the inclusion of EHD zero canvas mode and there's some filters and stuff for quads. But there's some slight interface changes that actually make the configurator nicer to use as well. So you may as well just, if you're on 3.0.2, just skip 4.0 and go straight to 4.1. There's no real reason not to and there's no detrimental issues at all. So having said that, load 4.1 configurator. And what we're going to do is I've got the plane already plugged in, so I'm just going to click connect. And of course, we're going to get dumped straight to the CLI, which is absolutely fine because that is all we need. What we're going to do first is create a full backup of that flight controller. So what we'll do is dump all. And what this will do is pull all the settings off and we can then save that to a file. So you can see I've already got one here. I'm just going to save it and replace it. What we can do now is clear the output history and we're going to make a diff. Now you never do an update with a full dump. You only ever use diffs. You only use the dump file to go back to an older version. So for example, if I install 4.1, but then decide for some silly reason that I want to go back to 3.0, I can use the dump file to restore those 3.0 settings. That's the only time you use a dump. If you're doing updates, you only ever use diffs. So I'll type in diff all, and this is what we'll use to do the update. So what I'm gonna do is copy this to the clipboard. I'm gonna open up Notepad, and I'm gonna paste the diff file into Notepad. 
So we have our diff file. Next, what we need to do is update our firmware. So while we're here, let's have a look at the top and we can see our target. So I will be lazy and copy this. And what we can do is disconnect and go to the firmware flasher. Now, like I said, I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to paste that in the box. The only target that should appear is that one. No, for some reason it didn't want to, but it's there now. And what we'll do is choose our firmware. So because obviously you only ever match configurator and firmware and make sure that you have full chip arrays enabled. This doesn't matter if you're coming from 3.0 or 4.0, you need to do this full chip arrays. So we'll load our firmware online and then we'll click the flash button. And of course we're gonna get a problem. I know I just need to press the DFU button and now we're in DFU, I can click the flash button and everything will work. Again, in the installation video, I covered in more detail what to do if things go wrong. If the DFU button doesn't work, basically find and use impulse RC driver fixer, sorts everything out. So once this has finished flashing, I'll come back to you. There we go, we're all done and we've rebooted. So next up, what we need to do is obviously connect to the flight controller and on this, because we're gonna be restoring settings anyway, I'm just gonna click keep current settings just to save time. Now at this point, we just wanna pop straight back into the CLI. And this is where we have a couple of decisions to make. So the first decision is really easy. Are we updating from 4.0 to 4.1? If true, then just select this whole diff, paste it in, save it, and you're basically done. Thank you, Flow Models, that you stole them. See you later. Stop! I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry about that. If you are updating to a newer version of iNav, it's always worth loading the latest font from the OSD page. I'm sure you guys know how to do this already, but if you don't, when you're ready for that, skip ahead to the section where I'm going through what to change if you're you know, removing the profile section, and I'll cover it in there. If you're going from 3.0 to 4, and your plane is flying absolutely perfectly, and I mean 100% perfectly, you can do the same. But in most cases, you will probably find that your tune could maybe be slightly better. 3.0 didn't quite have a perfect auto-tune. Basically, because the auto-tune now tuned rates and feed forward, we found that the original way of tuning the PID section just wasn't really right anymore. And you saw that on models like the AR Wing Pro, where you'd get sort of pitch oscillations and stuff like that. It basically was putting the values too high. So in 4.0, the PID tuning side is different. So auto-tune no longer tunes PI and D, but there are some nice defaults that will basically be fine for most things. And if you need to tune them, you can do them manually. But what we recommend doing is, if you're coming through 3.0.2, is to basically wipe out your old tune. So to do this, we're gonna go down to the profile section, which you can see here. So we have uh, profile with profile one, and this is a plane obviously only has one profile, but delete all three of them because it doesn't then need to switch profiles. It's, it's just a couple of steps it doesn't need to do. So what we'll do then is select our um, diff, copy it, and paste it into the CLI. Now, because we're coming from 3.0, if you were copying in the full diff with the profile, you will see an error for something like a D term, something or other in the profile section with an error. Don't worry about it. It's been removed from the CLI, so that's why you're getting the error. So you can just save, that's absolutely fine. If you see any other errors, that is unusual, so you'll need to investigate those further. But if you're going same target to same target, you should only see that one error if you import the profile section. If like this, we've removed the profile section, it will all go through cleanly. Right, so I'm cutting in on myself again. We need to update the font. So what I'm gonna do is go to the OSD page. And then all we're gonna do is go down to Font Manager, pick whichever font we want and click the Upload button. Once this is uploaded, it will automatically save and reboot and then we can carry on the process. So back to the video. So like I mentioned, the full diff 
you're basically done at this point. But because we've removed the profile section, we need to do a little bit more work to get this ready for our maiden or our remaiden. So if we pop into PID tuning, what we will notice is that the PIDs are actually flight controller defaults right now. And the reason for this, if I go right the way to the top of the default file, you'll see this defaults no reboot command. And basically what that does is set every parameter on the flight controller back to defaults. That's why we can use a diff basically, because any the diff only picks up values that we've changed. So anything else should be the flight controller default. The diff then just reinstalls the changed values. But the problem here is that we now have the flight controller defaults for the PIDs, not the defaults for an aeroplane of any type, let alone a tailless or a tailed plane. So what we need to do is reactivate those settings. So with 4.1, it's really, really easy. We just click this select new default button here and that will do everything for us. If for some strange reason you actually updated to 4.0 instead of 4.1, no need we will need to type something in the CLI. So I'll do it that way. But if yeah, we are on 4.1, just click that button. It will do the same. So we need set applied defaults equals zero, save. I'll put those in the description. But if you click that button, you'll get this rebooting screen, same as we're getting now after the CLI. And then we get our defaults box, of course, Dart 250G is an aeroplane without a tail, so I will choose those defaults. Once this comes back, we'll pop back into the PID tuning tab, and what we'll see is that all our defaults are now set correctly for an aeroplane without a tail. And there we go, we can see our PIDs are now set. So these are the default PIDs for iNav4. You can see we've actually got a bit of D-term in there, and we also have our rates. One thing I need to mention is that's not the only thing the defaults change. So there are some settings that your diff would have saved, but then applying the defaults after will have changed. So if I look on here, I know one setting for a fact that will be different is the return to home altitude. So you can see I've got it set to 7620. If we go into the advanced tuning page, we will see that that value is actually now 50 meters, which is the aeroplane default value. So what I'll do is I'll put a list in the video description of the parameters to double check that will probably be different to what you want them set at. So yeah, you can see RTH altitude is not that 7620, which it should be. While we're on the subject of things that have changed, there are some things that have changed between 3.0 and 4. So if you're coming from 4.0 to 4.1, you don't need to worry about this. It's already sort of happened. But if we're going from 3.0 to version 4.0 or 4.1, then there is another thing that is different and it really affects people who use multiple battery profiles. So if I do a diff all, what we can see here is our three battery profiles. Now, if I go back to the diff file, which is what we took from 3.0, you can see in our battery profile one, I only set five parameters, and in battery profile two, I only set three parameters. Now, battery profile one is my lithium ion setup, battery profile two is my LiPo setup. But if we now go into the diff, what you'll see is we now have a lot more parameters. And that's because some of the things have been moved from just being in the regular part of the CLI or the master section into battery profiles. And this actually makes a lot of sense because things like cruise throttle, idle throttle, pitch to throttle ratio, launch throttle and launch idle all are related to power. And if you, for example, swap from a 3S battery to a 4S battery or from a you know, same cell count LiPo to lithium ion even, you could need different power settings for those batteries. So that's why it's moved to the battery profile. The problem is that when we import a diff from 3.0, it's just using these set commands. So you can see like uh, nav fixed wing cruise throttle is just in the master section. So the fact that we just run this set nav cruise throttle will basically 
on the firmware, just put it in the currently active battery profile because that's where it's now stored. This doesn't actually cause us any problems going forward. It's just something that we need to be aware with and something that we need to update. But all we can see is because it's only storing them in the currently active battery profile when we do that first uh, restore of the diff, they're not actually set within battery profile two. So what we need to do is copy these values and then what we're going to do is activate battery profile 2. You can see up here it's already selected but I'll go through the process just so that you guys know how to do it. So it's typing in battery profile then the number of the profile you want so 2. That will activate the profile then we can set those values in the profile. So if I do a diff all you can see battery profile two has those values now. So they're basically the same at the moment. We can obviously then tweak them. If you're tweaking them in flight within adjustments, it will actually tweak them on the battery profile you're currently using. And you can also select the battery profile up the top here to change them in configurator itself. And to illustrate that, what I'll do is I'll just change the launch throttle. So as I mentioned, battery profile two is my LiPo setup. So, I don't need as much power on the LiPo to launch, so I'll reduce that a little bit just as a demo. So let's save that. And what we'll do is when this comes back, I'll pop into the advanced tuning tab and I'll see you in there. Right, so here we are in advanced tuning and you can see we're on battery profile two and my launch throttle is set to 1800. If I quickly swap this over to battery profile one, you can see it's at 2000. And again, any of the values that you want to adjust, you can and just do save and reboot and it will save it to whichever profile is selected here. One thing that is not in configurator at the moment, which I think would be an advantage is to actually know which fields are related to battery or control profiles. That way we know what we're changing when we adjust them. So yeah, that's something that we can look at in the future. But until then, that's all there is to it. At this point, we are now completely updated on whichever path we've taken. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get more videos when they come out. You'll probably find them useful if you found this one useful, but also it helps more people find this video so they can learn how to update to INF 4.2. Um, but basically get out there, fly your models like you style them and have fun. Probably not today because of you know, that out there, but you know, some people are probably breaking DS records, so awesome. Anyway, thank you guys. See you later.